Thank you. A warm welcome on today's Golden News show. It's incredible to have here with me a very good friend of mine, Helen Rabello. Hello, Helen. Welcome. Welcome on today's Thank show. You. Thank you. Thank you. What an absolute delight to be here and to talk to you again, as always. Yes. Talk, you know, soulful musings. Uh, and talking about self musings, uh, I'd like to start by saying, expressing my gratitude to say thank you to Helen. Uh, she was one of the crowdfunders uh, that supported the actual campaign behind and was successful. And that's what brought into life the book of self musings. Yay! Yay. <laughs> and uh, this is, this is uh, I like to start with this, but also I would like to say huge congratulations to Helen because now her book is also published, The Magical Unfolding. It is, Gorgeous. thank you, thank you. And you helped me crowdfund that as well. So it has been, it has been uh, crazy, you know, really positive crazy because uh, we started our journey, uh, sort of the concept and uh, the intention and putting things together last year in 2017. Mm -hmm. uh, but all, uh, you know, we, we actually, we crowdfunded our books and then uh, we published our books this, this year in 2018. So our journey has been it has been uh, magical and and full of uh, full of uh, revelations and transformations, digging deep, very deep sometimes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we are here. We're smiling. We're we're both very very excited about uh, giving birth to our books. And Helen, thank you so much for joining me today because uh, I know I know that we're going to to give to to give uh, lots of. Uh, um, magical little things golden nuggets that you can take away and you can use them in your in your life too so uh you. one of one of the things that helen helen that uh, and, and i are also we're really much connected with is uh our hearts and of course everybody's got a heart right <laughs> but uh, sometimes we we just forget listening to our hearts and mm -hmm. uh, our gorgeous uh, powerful heads actually take over and it can happen to all of us, to me, to Helen, to all of you watching this. So, uh, but how can we lead our lives from the heart and less from the head? Or even better, how we can have this conscious sort of balance between the two, which is not an easy thing to do, but it can happen. Yes, It can definitely happen. Yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, that's... Um... I realise actually that's what lies behind almost everything I've done over the years, all of my work and my own journey as well, and, I, and probably yours as well. It's, it's, it's learning how to really make friends with your head and um, it's learning how to recognise that you're not your head, you're not all the thought processes that happen in your head. Mm -hmm. um, and... And also learn to not hate the stuff that goes on in your head. Mm. You know, so many of us beat ourselves up, don't we? Because our heads are constantly busy. The amount of times I've heard people say, I just wish I could quiet my mind and my thoughts and shut my head up. And, you know, they ask me about um, meditation. How do I start meditating? Because they, they're, they're driven by something else that, tells them their head needs to be quieter and I often say well in the first instinct you know in the first instance recognize that even asking me that question means you're already recognizing that the things going on in your head don't encompass all of you there's another part of you that's wise enough to know that you can you can sidestep it mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you can't stop it no, you can't stop. You cannot thoughts. stop the thoughts and the whirring, but but you don't have to pay attention to it, and you don't have to let it rule rule your world. So um, uh, the thoughts have got their own, you know, use as well. So uh, without thoughts, we cannot, uh, you know, cannot express ourselves. We cannot create. We cannot give. We cannot uh, analyze. We cannot come to a decision or. You know, it's it's it, the logical analytical self of ours is part of who we are. Absolutely. But also is learning how to become more conscious about how the thoughts can manipulate you or can 
can mm -hmm. set you in a kind of a trap but because you allow them basically it's not because they won't harm you yes. i don't think the, the thoughts are there to uh, you know with the intention to harm anybody but it's how we it's like everything in life isn't it helen you know how we allow things people situations to uh, yeah. either to be in flow with what who we are what we're doing or create a lot of resistance and a lot of uh, uh, disharmony in our lives basically yeah. yeah yeah no absolutely I think um, for me I came to recognize that well and as many of us do that most of the problems I used to have were coming from a place of me believing one voice but not really listening to another voice mm -hmm. and, um, and 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 that Again, it's been something I've encountered in so many people I've worked with over the years. But what I recognize is we also really crave um, peace and quiet. It just, it's this, this inherent human desire mm. to have a sense of peace. It's, it's part of our makeup. It's part of our DNA. And I've come to the conclusion that that's because when we are more peaceful and quiet, although we don't necessarily stop all the thought processes and all the things happening we are better able to listen to our inner wisdom and we we mm. start to slowly recognize that there's part of us that can be with the thoughts and you know all the head stuff but it doesn't have to consume us and mm. and from that place eventually if you if you repeat practices that take you into a quieter space often enough you start to realize that these other these other instincts these other quieter deeper more wise voices come through um, that I think of as being the voice of your heart and I mm. and I know that I know that you know how to get to that place as well because that's really that's the place we write from I think yeah. it's it's um you, you we need our heads like you say our he our heads our thoughts give us the ability to communicate what's going on in our hearts with the wider world through other senses um so we you know it's 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 just about making friends with yourself really and not not like you say going with the flow kind of not fighting with what is and um yeah. remembering yes. that all aspects of you make up who you are and um why not just embrace the lot and and learn how to manage it rather than try and quieten everything down mm. yeah and i will add to this a wonderful quote that you actually shared by albert einstein actually i have uh, used albert einstein a quote by him in my book as well <laughs> <laughs> wonderful albert of course because we are very aligned you and i <laughs> yes so you 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 quoted the most beautiful experience we can have is the mysterious it is the fundamental emotion that stands at the cradle of true art and true science. So Albert Einstein, although he was a scientist and he was analyzing a lot, still he was very much connected with his heart. And I guess, guess what? This is why he actually he came up with uh, these wonderful uh, revelations and uh, you know, bringing the mystery into his life and saying yes to life. Um, so, so this is, I guess, this is what you are bringing to your book. You know, like uh, you are, it is an invitation to the readers to embrace more of the mystery of the magic, and yeah. uh, being in the flow and allow more ease with, uh, you know, on a on a personal level, but also you know on 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 business professionally as well. Because once you embrace that in your own life, then that can naturally bring it into your everyday life whatever whatever you do whatever you know you experience with so so hard led living yes so you, you this this is this is a big part in your book like it's a big yeah. part in my book which is <laughs> again it's, it's incredible um so you talk about different stages and different steps so so what would you say you know somebody if they want to they would love to be more connected. They would love to drop mm. more into their hearts, but they are struggling. They mm. are scared. They are, 
not knowing how, they're doubting themselves they could actually do it. So what would you say would be a good place from there for them to start, Helen? Um, somebody who's in that position, the, the, the first step I address with anything I do, and it's pretty much, pretty much the first step in the book, it's actually step two because the first step is a, is a preparatory step. Um, but then the first step after that has to be about um, self-worth, mm. valuing yourself enough to, to give yourself permission to adopt um, practices that can help you basically get out of this mm. and get back into your heart. So in the past, my answer to this question would have been, uh, well, they just need to get grounded, you know, they just need to get out of their head and get more into their body. And that's really e It's actually really easy because energy goes, energy flows where your attention goes. So anybody can play with simple, simple guided focuses or on their own where they literally let their attention drop into their feet on the ground. And, you know, if somebody does that enough, they start to recognize that they have more power over their ability to shift their own energy than they realize. Mm -hmm. And, and there's no special training required and anyone can do it because all we're doing is accessing a, a, a fundamental human skill that we have. We just don't remember to do it. So, um, so to circle back round to where I started, that's really all you have to do to start tuning into your heart is learning how to get out of your head because that's where we all live and that's where mm. all our energy is and we're kind of all locked up you know <laughs> shoulders up as earrings and um it's really hard to tune into your heart because you breathe shallowly and and you're up here letting this be really busy but in order to give yourself permission to practice playing with things like grounding and playing with things like shifting your own energy and getting out of your head by really simple practices you need to give yourself permission to do it first and you need to give yourself permission to do it regularly and you need to value yourself and your right to to live with mm -hmm. uh, with more full expression and more joy and all the lovely things that heart-led living gives you you need to address that piece first so um that was a very long answer <laughs> Well, it's, it's, it is a it is a very uh, big question as well so it requires a bit more uh, uh, digging if you like so does, so yeah. yes uh, and uh, if if i connect with the 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 the, the wisdom and, and world of color that i work with if you look at the self-worth and, and self-value it connects with your solar plexus so yeah. if you, if your solar plexus is not in balance, basically you're not connecting with your 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 truth, with your with your yeah. wonderful you, you know, with your power that is your very core of your being. It's very if if you, if that chakra is not in balance, then you won't be able to allow your heart to to express from that space. Yeah. And your heart will always sort of questioning, are you sure you want to do this? Are you sure it's a, are, you know, are, are you good enough to do this? So, so the heart starts questioning it because you do not have that, that chakra here in balance. Yeah. And yes, when you talk about self-worth, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's about valuing exactly that you deserve to have that moment, that peace, that stillness, that grounding moment to yourself yeah um and yeah and and remember to breathe <laughs> because we yes. forget to breathe <laughs> yes absolutely and, and if you think about it the the base of the diaphragm is exactly where that that chakra is isn't it and and how many people actually breathe fully and activate that chakra how many people have got really tight diaphragms and it's a muscle and if it's tight it's really hard to unlock that yeah that energy in your solar yeah. plexus so i love that you brought that in as well yes yeah yes yes so um so uh i would i would like to to uh, to say that uh living from the heart is also allowing more of your your child your inner child coming out and uh 
and if you think of children they're just really amazed at everything <laughs> they <Yes>. are just <laughs> they're just curious about everything they just they say wow about everything and then we adults because we are grown-ups we just say oh come on you know just uh, just be serious be serious and and there are moments we need to be serious of course but also there are moments that we need to remind ourselves the beauty of uh, uh, embracing the magic and this is this is why i was telling you before helen this is why actually i i connected with the beauty of northern lights although i haven't experienced them yet uh, yet because i will at some point same <laughs> it's crossed <laughs> fingers crossed um uh, this is this is why i brought the northern lights in uh, in uh, in the cover of the book uh, mm. and also it is in a, in a, as, as you open the book is there like something to connect with and you can look at it more as often as you like uh, because okay i work with color okay yeah. that's that's uh, that's that's i'm color therapist but also i love how nature can actually teach us to be in the present moment and to yes isn't it yes very much so there is there's nothing quite like going for a walk especially somewhere that's more expansive you know and to just just bring you back into full connection with something you know so much bigger than all the stuff that is going on in your head it's um yeah nature nature is amazing and i you know i love um I love seasons for that same reason mm. because I love, I just love watching the the shifts of nature and, 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 and watching how nature just, just does its thing. Doesn't it? It's, like, yes, yes. <laughs> it's time to hibernate. Okay. Then I'll just hibernate. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, that's the natural flow. That's the cycle. That's the cycle. Yeah. yeah. We, we, t we tend to go against the cycle. We, that's, that's yeah. what, uh, that's what we create that sort of, going against uh you know what is naturally normal you know yes and we don't accept that and so we go against it and then and then the more you go going against the more you know you put yourself under a lot of stress yeah anxiety kicks in and uh, that's again that's how disease comes in and yeah 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 and uh, and again that's um that just comes back to to being really led from your head and your shoulds and your sense of obligation and of course as humans we have things we have to honor and commitments and we have to fit into a certain way mm. to to do the things we have to do because that's the nature of our world but when you um when you do live more from your heart you get so much better at recognizing your own patterns and and honoring your own energy dips and dives and um and you might have to change some aspects of your life. I'm not going to lie, but you don't have to do it all overnight. It's not as though you suddenly drop out of your head, get back into your heart and think, oh no, I have to change everything, which is what people sometimes think. It's an, it's a, you know, and then, and then you end up being overwhelmed, uh, being overwhelmed. Yes. Yeah. And then you don't um, do it because, you know, you just expect too much from yourself. Yeah. And it's too scary. Um, but you, but it, you can, you can shift and change your life and you can shift and change the kind of paradigm you live in, but just by doing it in little tiny, small drip, drip, mm. drip, drip, drip steps. And, mm. um, and then before you know it, you're like me and you're living, <laughs> you're living in a place I didn't even know existed when I first started writing the book because I've changed so much about how I wanted to live my life. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's happened over a long period of time. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the word that comes to me, and and uh, and I like to honor that word because it has been part of my evolutionary journey. Is trust mm. that every single step you take towards understanding more of uh, where you are, who you are, where you want to be, the people you want to be, what you like to bring to your life, how you want to add value to other people's lives, whatever step you take, every tiny little step, trust that is going to take you to to another step in another space where you can bring more people that would uh, get you that you can bring more of a joy in your life and other people's lives and even if you just get a really smack on your face well that's about it that's how it, you know believe me i have received lots of lots of things like that 
uh, you know it's it's uh, it's okay it's part of it's part of uh, connecting with your with your with your gut connecting with your heart connecting with your with your vision you know with uh, your third eye and uh, keep the, the the focus clear for you you know it's yes. it's it's uh, it's it is an ongoing process that's all i'm saying that's what i also yeah. um share in the book uh and it's it's an ongoing process and it's worth it is it's really really, so worth worth it. It. Yeah. really worth it it's so worth it and um yeah i love i love the way you describe that and as i was listening to you what i was um reminded of is how important it is to live with integrity mm. you know and for me that's such an important value for me but, mm. but also it talks about us being fully integrated and and you know as well as i do that if you are if you are living purely from your head and you're you're kind of denying something fundamental about your being you're not fully integrated and and you will always feel a sense of dissatisfaction because you're just not bringing all parts of yourself to the party we call life and it's and it's really important to do that. And like any other party, yes, there will be dull moments and, um, and there will be challenging moments. You might be an introvert like me and actually hate parties and they can be a bit scary. But then you'll come away and you'll be so glad you went because yes. you'll find the gold. <laughs> you'll meet some beautiful people. And um, so, yeah, it's definitely, it is definitely 100% a journey worth embarking on. Um, and finding out more about by by getting books like yours and books like mine and many there are so many other books so many, out there absolutely. that address this now it's just it's just an amazing thing to see isn't it yeah yeah and, and then again you know investing investing in yourself is the greatest investment of all you know it's and then books are there to they, they are investment as well and uh, I, I believe myself and yourself Helen everyone who's actually attracted to watch this uh, you believe in in the power of books in the in the magic of books mm -hmm. and i'm sure books have been part of your lives and has have supported you and inspired you and empowered you in many many amazing ways they have been part of my life and this is why i knew i would love to write a book i didn't know exactly when it's going to happen but it did happen now and and uh, and it's it's amazing it's it's uh, if you believe that you would love to write a book it is possible go for it mm -hmm. Absolutely. But it's, it's 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 possible but also also connect with people that can help you to make it happen because it can be a very lonely process as well so you really need to be with people that can uh, can uh, support you can encourage you because encouragement is so important uh, yeah. in everything everything we do you know as a child but also as an adult we really need that uh, that uh, nourishment you know of, of people supporting and encouraging you know with a small something little doesn't have to be too much or it could be something bigger if you're thinking about uh, a bigger project so so there you are so i just want to say i just want to encourage you to uh, go for it and write your own book uh, and and if it, I'll, I'll ask you helen and i would like to to close our soft musings today's soft musings because i'm sure there will be more to come uh, uh, what was it that you actually what was one of the reasons because i know there are different reasons uh, we write books but what was your your primary reason to write a book ah oh, there's so many reasons i wanted to write a book so to find the primary reason that's a really good question actually let's see what wants to come out from my heart today um it was it was primarily led by something much much bigger than myself mm. um and I, I don't know if I've ever told you this, but um, I, had, I had this really, I've, I've wanted to write a book since I was eight. And it's taken me a really long time to honour my inner writer because I, I suppressed her for so long. Um, but when I started really owning my stuff and opening my heart and, and acknowledging my right to express myself my thoughts acknowledging my right to have a voice having not really honored that for over 40 years of my life i um 
I one day got this really clear vision in a meditation um, where I was in the middle of a forest and I was in a clearing in the middle of a forest and um, there was there was like really dark woods either side and from one side of this forest came um, people who mostly women who were like um, I used to be um, so women that worked in a much more um, recognized profession in the I used to be in the NHS so they were they were nurses and doctors and um, but, and teachers and police and kind of people that worked in the service sector who were very grounded, not very interested in spiritual things at all. Like I used to be. <laughs> like you used to be, like I used to be. Mm. And then on the other side, I had the people who were very into the woo stuff, you know, kind of very airy fairy, but as a result, not necessarily very grounded. Completely different sets of people. Um, and they all started coming out of the this kind of dark forest and forming a circle and I was I was in the circle helping hold the space of the circle I wasn't the leader of the circle or anything like this uh, I was just the, like a facilitator and um, and in this vision we all start to hold hands we're all connecting heart to heart which is a practice you've probably done and I've done as well in yoga classes and various trainings mm -hmm. where you, you tune into each other's heart energy mm -hmm. and you can feel it. And, um, and in this vision, everybody's hearts lit up. So they were visible hearts and, and it was like this daisy chain light, daisy chain of hearts. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then what happened in this vision was that everybody's relatives, everybody's teachers, everybody's ancestors started forming bigger and bigger, more wow. concentric circles around us because we'd lit up our hearts. And, in, and because of that, it's like we could create this ripple that mm -hmm. could spread out through the ancestral line, down through the future line. It was created from teachers we'd had and all these different influences we had. And, and then I had this really clear voice in my head um, that said, that was, that was an, it was like the ancestral voice. That's the only way I can describe it. And it said, we, I'm getting emotional now. It was like, we need, we need you. We need you to share your insights and your journey from being someone who would never express themselves. And we need you to do that because you now have a voice and we never did. So we need you to do that for us. You, you are our voice. Oh, I feel it too. I really feel it too. Oh. And um, yeah, I can feel goosebumps all over me yeah. as I say it. it, yeah. it, it it's the vision it's, that has sustained the whole process. It, it's the vision I come back to now that I'm on the other side. And as you know, when you're, when you're on the other side of a book, you think you're kind of done, but you're only just beginning. Mm -hmm. and, and it requires a whole new set of heart-led skills to negotiate new territory that yeah. neither of us have been in before. So. No, that's, that's exactly that, yes. <laughs> Yes. Oh, thank you for sharing that, Helen. Thank you. Oh, pleasure. Thank you. And, and it's, uh, and I thank you for honoring these voices and, and your own voice and, uh, and saying yes to uh, step up because by writing the book is exactly what you said. You know, it's a great achievement to sit down and, and, and take the time and space and connect with your heart and write the book and share your, your insights in the book. Uh, but also it's a step up when say, well, here I am world. I'm here and I've got my own light and I'm going to share my light. And I would love, love, love this light to, to touch you as well. And then be inspired and inspire other people. And that's for me, that's what we're here for. Yes. That's what we're here for. We're that here is, to contribute. Really yeah. To contribute to everybody else's lives. You know, we're here. We're not here to be happy on our own. We're here to be happy with others and see others growing and 
And that's how where our societies can, can flourish as well. That's how this world can be a better place where everybody. Yes. 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 So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so on that note, on that note, uh, on that very, very positive and exciting note, uh, I'd like to say to Helen uh, Rebello, and, and I wanted to say Rebello because I know she's a rebel like I am. <laughs> So and we need that kind of rebels in our lives every now and then. Although sometimes you say, "Oi, what on earth are they doing? That's too scary," <laughs> you know. But you know, it's stepping up. That's all I'm saying. It's stepping up, and it takes a lot of courage. And it's uh, it's it's true. It's true. The true magic happens like that when you yeah. when you say yes to something new, something out of your comfort zone. Yes. Absolutely. I could not agree more. I have this little um, hashtag mantra that kept me going through the whole process and still does. And it's um, hashtag my mission is bigger than my fear. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. Absolutely. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so oh. thank you. So Helen, how can uh, we get in touch with you? How can we get in touch through, uh, I know you're active on social media, on Facebook. Uh, are you on Instagram as well? Yes. Yeah. Do you know what? I actually, I, I, I love Instagram. I, that's, that's become my new, my new love. If I'm, if I'm honest, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm on Facebook as well, but I've, I'm, I'm on it intermittently. I mean, I, I'm on it in fits and starts. So you can find me on Facebook. Um, you can also find me on Instagram. I'm, I'm at Helen Rebello author because I have claimed my, my long suppressed inner author. And, um, and then my website is Helen And I'm, I'm building out a whole new, a whole new suite of, of, of offerings that are going to help people get out of their heads and into their hearts. Brilliant. Beautiful. What's happening? Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, uh, there you are. So, so uh, from, lots of love for me, Chrisula Sirigu, the Golden Muse, and from my guest today, Helen Rebello. Thank you. Bye for now. <laughs>